Now, I know how to preach if I wanted to without any derision from the worldly crowd. Just preach a Jesus, not virgin born, not sinless, no deity, no demand for the new birth, no standard of right and wrong, no judgment, no discipleship, and especially this, no only way to heaven. For he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Either that's true or it's not true. Now, if it is true, he is the only way. If it is not true, he is a liar, and he is none of the ways. You can't just tip the hat to Jesus. You must bow the knee to Jesus. Profound truth simply stated. This is Love Worth Finding with pastor, teacher, and author Adrian Rogers. Today we're talking about our Lord Jesus Christ and His unblemished life. Do you remember when you were a child and it was near Christmas? Perhaps the Christmas tree was in the family room and uh, it was decorated. Maybe your family hung stockings by the chimney. There were presents under the tree and you could hardly wait till Christmas morning. Uh, well, I'm going to give you a story today about a man who was anticipating Christmas. He was waiting for Christmas, the very first Christmas, the very best Christmas ever. His name was Simeon. He was looking. He was waiting. He was longing. He was anticipating the coming of Jesus Christ into this world. Now, let's look, if we will, in Luke chapter 2, verse 25. And behold, you know what that means, congregation? Behold, it means pay attention. <laughs> Listen, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. That's just another way of saying waiting for the Messiah. And the Holy Ghost was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Literally, before he had seen Messiah. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Here's the message. We're talking about Jesus Christ, his incomparable life. And Simeon says six things about the Lord Jesus Christ. He says these by divine prophecy. He says these because he's a man anointed and filled with the Holy Ghost of God. And the things that I want you to learn about our dear Savior who stepped out of heaven and came to earth. Who is this baby that Simeon held in his arms. Number one, he is the one who brings deliverance. He is the one who will bring your deliverance. Chapter 2, look in verses 30 and 31. He says, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go to heaven. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Why did Jesus come? To deliver us. Uh, the baby that Mary delivered was the one who would deliver us, as the song says. He is our deliverer. This is a hell-bound world. This is a sin-bound world. This is a world that needs a Savior, and that's the reason that Jesus came to earth. He was born of a virgin, that we might be born again. Now, 
You know, there are a lot of people who get all excited about a, a baby. The merchants get excited about babies this time of the year and the Christ child and the manger scenes. Why? Because uh, it, the jingle bells to them are the bells of the cash, cash register. Right now, it's for you, it's jingle bells. A little while, it'll be juggle bills. <laughs> but uh, they, 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 they're all excited about a baby. Well, anybody can look around and dance around a, a crib like that. But these people don't understand that Jesus Christ has come as a Savior to save them from their sins. That same giddy crowd that is dancing around the manger, give them one week, and they'll be in a drunken stupor singing Old Lang Syne. Same crowd. Listen, friend, get away from this sentimentality about a baby being born and understand that that baby is the Savior of the world. When Simeon held him in his arms, he said, I've seen your salvation. He is the Christ of deliverance. Number two, he is the one who dispels darkness. Not only does he bring deliverance, he dispels darkness. Look, if you will, now, verses 32 and 33. Simeon said, he is a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Jesus is the light. There's no reason for you to stumble in darkness when you can walk in the light. You will never understand the meaning of life until you know the light of the world whose name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know there's some people who are afraid of Jesus. We laugh at children being afraid of the dark. I think more ridiculous than that is an adult afraid of the light. Men hate the light, and they will not come to the light because their deeds are evil. But he is the light, and he is a delight, and there's no greater joy than to know the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who dispels darkness. If you're stumbling in darkness, if you want to know the way, he is the way. If you need light, he is the light. If you're seeking for understanding, he is the truth. Friends all around me are trying to find what the world yearns for by sin undermined. I have the secret. I know where it is found. Only true pleasures in Jesus abound. Friend, Jesus is all this world needs today. Blindly they strive for sin darkens their way. Oh, to pull back the grim curtains of night. One look at Jesus and all will be light. He is the one who dispels darkness. Number three, he Jesus is the one who determines destiny. Look again, if you will, in verse 34. And Simon blessed them, that is, Mary and Joseph, and said unto Mary his mother. Notice he doesn't say unto Joseph his father. Mary his mother, he blessed them. But he didn't say father and mother because Jesus was the earthly child of a heavenly father and the heavenly child of an earthly mother. And he blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel. I'm going to stop reading right there. He's the Christ of destiny. Listen, you will fall or rise on Jesus. Jesus will be to you a stepping stone or he will be a stumbling block. But your destiny is determined by what you will do with the Lord Jesus Christ. When I was studying this passage, a scripture came to my mind, 1 Peter 2, verses 6 through 8. Put it down. Peter says, Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded, that is, shall not be put to shame. For unto you, unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. What does that mean? Christ is the solid rock. Christ is the foundation stone. Christ is the cornerstone. And he's before you today. You can build on him or stumble over him, but you cannot go around the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the one who determines destiny. Either Jesus Christ will be your Savior or Jesus Christ will be your judge. 
He will be a stepping stone or a stumbling stone, but you have an appointment with Jesus Christ. He is inescapable. He is inevitable. He is unavoidable. You have a date with Jesus. You're going to meet him as Savior or Judge. But as I live, as I stand here today, I'm telling you with all of the emphasis, function, unction, and emotion of my soul, please listen to me. This baby that Simeon held in his hands is the Christ of your destiny, one way or the other. He is either the door that lets you in or the door that keeps you out. But you have a date with the Lord Jesus Christ. And what Jesus Christ will do with you is determined by what you will do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me give it to you very clearly and very plainly. John chapter 3, verse 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. If you today are not a believer, if you have never received the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not one day that you're going to face the wrath of God. The wrath of God is abiding on you right now. This baby, this baby is the one who determines destiny. If you're enjoying this message from Adrian Rogers and would like to dig a little deeper into today's topic, we'd love to send you this free companion Bible study. Use the link above to request yours. Now next, I want you to see he is the one who provokes derision. He is the one who provokes derision. Look, if you will, again in verse 34. And Simeon said unto them and unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. That, friend, is destiny. And listen to this. And for a sign which shall be spoken against. Jesus, this baby, is going to face derision. He's going to face mockery. He's going to face blasphemy. When the Lord Jesus Christ was here on earth, some said, you're mad. Others said, he has a demon. Others said, he's a wine bibber and a glutton. Others inferred that he was born out of fornication when the Pharisees said, we be not born of fornication. We know who our father is. Do you get the sly put down the slur that they put upon the Lord Jesus Christ. He is a sign that will be spoken against. If he is not spoken against, you can be sure the gospel is not being preached. Now, I know how to preach if I wanted to without any derision from the worldly crowd. Just preach a Jesus, not virgin born, not sinless, no deity, no demand for the new birth, no standard of right and wrong, no judgment, no discipleship, and especially this, no only way to heaven. No only way to heaven. Just preach that. Now today, we're all un American. If we don't put our arms around everybody else and say, your faith is just as good as ours, that is not so. That is a lie out of hell. Neither is there salvation in any other. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved than the name of Jesus. None. You see, if Jesus is not the only way, he can't be any of the ways. If Jesus is not the only way, he's a liar. For he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Either that's true or it's not true. Now, if it is true, he is the only way. If it is not true, he is a liar, and he is none of the ways. You can't just tip the hat to Jesus. You must bow the knee to Jesus. The early Christians could have escaped martyrdom had they offered a pinch of, Caesar, a pinch of incense to Caesar and said, Caesar is Lord and Christ is Lord. But they said, no, Christos Kurios. He is the Lord. He is the only one. You see, this is the Christ of derision. He is the one who is spoken against. The Bible says in one time, one occasion in the Bible, they laughed him to scorn. Can you imagine him holding his eyes, <laughs> pointing to Jesus, laughing him to scorn? More of that is happening in the world today. 
Jesus is the one who is derided. He's the one who's spoken against. Now come up close, I'm going to tell you something. If you are his disciple, you also will be spoken against. The Bible says, beware when all men speak well of you. And contrarywise, Jesus said, blessed are ye when men shall persecute you and revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. And it is time that preachers in America stop trying to win popularity contests and preach Jesus Christ, who may be the Christ of derision, but he's the only Savior of the world. Amen. The only Savior of the world. The only one. He is the Christ of derision. Now, number five, he is the one who causes division. You say, Pastor Rogers, you, you, you're dividing folks. That's true. That's true. Look again in chapter 2, verse 35. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. Now, he's speaking to Mary. He's saying, Mary, a sword is going to pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Jesus is the most divisive force that has ever come into this world. Jesus divides human hearts. Let me give you a, a, an ancillary scripture here. Put in your margin Hebrews 4 verse 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Simeon said, Mary, this baby is going to be like a sword in your heart. It's going to divide between your natural emotions as a mother and your desire for the will of God. And you're going to find this conflict between natural emotions and the spiritual life between the, your soul and the spirit. All of us, all of us who have received the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord feel that sword on the inside, do we not? The pull of the old life and the desire of the new life. Do you ever feel that conflict? You say, Pastor Rogers, I, I don't have any conflict. I'm just doing just fine. <laughs> you're not doing as fine as you think you're doing. If you and the devil, if you've never met the devil, it's because you and the devil have been going in the same direction. You turn around, you give your heart to Jesus Christ, you become twice born, you let the Spirit of God come into you, and you're going to find that old nature and that new nature. There's going to be a division in your life. Now, here's the sixth thing and the final thing I want to say about this baby. He is the one who reveals decisions. Look again, if you will, in verse 35. A yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also. Now, watch this. That the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Do you know what the preaching of this word is doing today? Is revealing your thoughts. It's exposing you to yourself and to God. He's the one who is revealing decisions. You see, the gospel is a savor of life unto life or death unto death. When I'm preaching, you may say, I don't agree with that. I will not accept that. I refuse that. I repudiate that. I will not yield to that. He's revealing your heart. There are others who say that is true. What he says is true. I need a Savior. I need to be saved. I need to love him, know him, and follow him. His word is revealing your heart. You see, what makes the difference in individuals? It's not education. It's not social status. It is not environment. People can be raised in the same family, children. One child loved God and the other child not loved God. Cain and Abel had basically the same environment. Two thieves on the cross. One crucified on Jesus' right hand, one on the other. One of those thieves cursed and blasphemed and spit blasphemies in the face of Jesus. Another one of those dying thieves said, Lord, remember me 
when you come into your kingdom. I'll preach this morning and some will say yes to Jesus and some will say no to Him and the preaching of Him will decide and determine and reveal what's in your heart. The same preaching. It's a, savor, it's a sword uh, that cuts life unto life or death unto death. The same sun that melts ice hardens clay. The same sermon that brings people to Jesus can harden people and turn them away from Jesus. But it's not the sermon that really does it. The sermon only reveals the heart. What is really in you is determined by how your heart resonates to the preaching of Jesus. Look at the verse again. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts shall be revealed. Now, what you do with Jesus is going to determine what Jesus does with you. Do you know what Simeon did? Simeon took this baby, held him in his arms, brought him to his breast, and said, Lord God, <laughs> I'm ready to go. Let me depart in peace. I have seen your salvation. Today, you can embrace Jesus with the arms of faith. Today, you can receive him as your Lord and Savior. Surely as I stand here this morning, the Jesus who came the first time in literal fulfillment of Scripture is coming again. Amen. A man told a story I read. I can hardly ever forget it. He said he went down to the train station and people were getting off the train and meeting loved ones and there was embracing and kissing. But this man said there at the train station, he saw some men walk up and they had a man with them and that man had handcuffs on and they were leading him away on that train. Evidently, he was going to the penitentiary and his children were there and his wife was there and they were weeping and wailing as this man was being led away. And then that man said, you know, he said, that's so much like the coming of Jesus. What joy it will be to those of us who know him. What joy it will be when we have that grand reunion when we meet our loved ones, when Jesus comes. But how sad it will be for some who will be bound and cast into outer darkness. What Jesus does with you depends upon what you will do with him. You can accept him or you can reject him. You can crown him or you can crucify him, but you cannot ignore him. He is the Christ of destiny. Bow your heads in prayer. If you're not certain that you're saved, I want you to get it certain right now. If you would like to be saved, he's knocking at your heart's door. He brought you here to be saved and you can embrace him with the arms of faith. Would you pray a prayer like this? Dear God, I know that you love me. I know that you want to save me. Jesus, you died to save me. You promised to save me if I would trust you. I do trust you, Jesus. In your name I pray, amen.